Hello, you gorgeous Mama Gemmas. Are you excited and ready to embark on your hotness journey? Because I'm certainly ready to teach you. I may have a back spasm, which means I cannot get up from this position after this. I may have been looking after my child with the flu all week, but yes, I am here to let you know how to be hot. The first thing that I want to address on a serious note is the concept of trend versus actually being seductive and a hot person that people are seduced by and want. Let us sip some tea. Because we're gonna spill the tea. You need to understand first and foremost in the paradigm of what beauty is and what hotness is. Because I'm not, in this video, we're gonna talk about seductiveness, attraction and hotness, but not gonna talk about beauty because beauty is something that you can be looking at but not attracted to. A tree is beautiful, the view is beautiful. Some women are extremely beautiful, but they're not attractive or they're hot, right? We're going to be talking about hotness, okay? Sexiness. You need to understand that if you buy into trends and if you buy into the current concepts of what is sexy and attractive, currently it might be Kirby Kardashian figure. That's overset and overdone, but that's just a really basic example of what hotness can be seen as, right? In the 90s, it was the small hips and the Pamela Anderson boobs. If you look at women's boobs at the moment in media or press or whatever that kind of 90s silicone chest is considered matronly that's the word right now matronly everyone wants small and perky boobs but back in the 90s everyone wanted that matronly look because that's not what it was considered to be everything ebbs and flows everyone wanted the barbie legs the skinny legs in the 2000s now they want some meat on the legs it all changes through times now if you are going to hang the value of your attractiveness on current trends you will never truly truly feel hot and sexy you need to understand that if i take you on an airplane right now to five different countries your value and merit is going to go up and down in all of them cultures have different sexy limits and variations Areas have different sexiness and variations. Some cultures like long nails, some cultures like short, some cultures like big brown eyes, some cultures like smaller eyes, some cultures like big lips. And in some cultures, big lips is a no-no. You've got to have them small. What is this to tell you? That is not for you to get on the plane and travel to a country where you're going to be appreciated. No, it's to understand that if you are quintessentially that Pamela Anderson girl with a big chest and small hips, you would have been trendy in the 90s and you wouldn't be so trendy now, but that does not take away from your hotness because you know why? Ready for this? Ready for the groundbreaking thing that I'm going to tell you that you probably know, but I'm going to remind you of? Just because something is trendy doesn't mean that the lover of that thing is not seeing it. What do I mean by that? If this is a percentage of men or whoever you're attracted to, women, men, whatever, this is all of them, right? In the 90s, there was a certain look but still the same amount of people like that look, this amount of people. And now still the same amount of people like that look. It doesn't matter that the times have changed. Not everybody looks into trends and goes, oh yeah, now it's big bums, I'm gonna like big bums. It's just that now people, those people have a voice. You still have your market. It's just not what's trendy. So that means you've got to come into this world and you've got to come correct, having a certain confidence and je ne sais quoi and juge, knowing that your percentage of people who like your type, whatever you may look like, are still out there. If you're a Latina hottie, or if you are this girl with Scandinavian features, those men who would have liked you have not just gone in the bin and been thrown away just because the trend for your type isn't there. They're still around. It's just that your type isn't in the magazines at the moment. And to be honest, who cares about the magazines? The media is just trying to sell you something, trying to sell you a look, an idea. What you need to do is step away from that and have some value into your actual self and who you are and know that there's a market out there for you. And in that knowledge, you're going to transform from this like half-assed, shy, like apologetic version of yourself into a powerhouse of, of, of personal hotness. So now if you're a girl who's not in trend, if you've got a certain type of physique, I don't know what it is anymore because to be honest, I don't care and I don't follow it. But let's say you don't have that curvy butt. The amount of men that don't like curvy butts are still out there. So you, with your tiny little tushy, need to carry yourself with your tiny little tushy energy and, and be out there. For example, big boobs aren't trendy anymore. If I still walk around being proud of the fact that I have a certain body type, those men who like boobs are still going to look at me that way. And again, it's not just men, it's whoever you're attracted to, right? But it comes from 
being the utmost and best version of yourself. That's what hotness is. That's what confidence is and not being apologetic and trying to shift yourself and dumb yourself down into something. The second part of sensuality or sexuality or hotness is not to do with sexual activity. And it's not to do with exemplifying assets. You've got to understand that sexuality, sexiness and seductiveness is got to do with inner knowledge and confidence in the self and connectiveness to your body. So if you're somebody who plays sport, does yoga, does what it is you need to do for your body, eats the right foods for your body, is connected to your body, you're going to be that much hotter than the girl who is not in touch with her body, doesn't know what she's doing, doesn't know what's right for her, but she's wearing a low cut top and a tiny skirt. I promise you. And what we're talking about here is not instant, oh my God, look, she's naked, I'm gonna look at her, but real seductive qualities over time when someone can look at you and be like, oh my God, she's so alluring. What is going on? It's breaking my brain, you know? She's just so seductive. That kind of hotness and that kind of allure and seductiveness comes from a self-knowledge. So put self-knowledge before skimpy clothes. If you want to wear skimpy clothes and that's your confidence level and that's your comfortability, then by all means, you can do that. But that's not what sexuality is entitled, is in, involved in, enwrapped in, enamored in. It's to do with your knowledge of your own body. Because when that person looks at you, they know that you've got some kind of power over your own body, over your own space, over your own likes and dislikes. And what people love to do when they see someone sexy and especially men is to bring you happiness is to bring you pleasure is to make you smile and is to make you feel a type of way that's what makes people enamored with you and when they see that that is possible to do that with you because you have a, a knowledge of your own inner self that's what makes someone sexy because you can see in their eyes that they have that allure already they have that connection with their body already it's not about being sexually active either. Just because you are somebody who is not quick on the uptake and sleeping with everybody, it doesn't mean you're not sexy. In fact, having power in your own space and the ability to say yes or no and boundaries is way more sexy than being like, yes, I'm super sexually active. Everyone come at me. That's not sexuality. That's just a level of openness that I'm not sure one should even strive for, to be honest. But if that's you, you do you, but that is not what sexuality is wrapped in. It's about knowing your body, looking after your body, and especially if you're a woman, understanding your boundaries and understanding what it is you need to do for your body. Putting yourself first is a major one. Hot people put themselves first so they've got something to give to other people. They've got some repl replenishment to give because they're pouring from a cup that's already full. Another thing that hot people do is not put themselves out for other people and then get resentment and rat-like and angry. They don't put themselves out. They do what they need to do for themselves first without trying to control other people. They're quiet in their confidence. They're replenishing themselves. They're on their own journey. They're not stalking you on their Instagram. They're not trying to find out what you're doing. You're not their main focus. They are their main focus. You are their secondary focus. And you know, because I know you know, when you've met a person like that, you are like, damn, they're so attractive because they're just in their own lane. Hot people are in their own lane. Hot people do things that are inadvertently hot. Like they won't always reply to you at the same time. They're unpredictable. You know why? It's not because they're trying to reply to you at different times. One day it's five minutes, one day it's five hours. It's because they actually have a life. So on a Tuesday, they might be with their friends and going to Pilates and doing this important work deal. But on a Monday, they might have been by their phone and answered. They're not playing games. They just have a lifestyle which facilitates them to sometimes reply to you and sometimes not. You, by being around that person, know that you're not the center of their attention and nor should you be because who are you? You just met them. Hot people put themselves first. They know to put themselves first. And last but not least, hot people can take up their space, can take up their time, can talk slowly. They speak in a way to take up space. They don't feel the need to rush. They don't break eye contact. I'm looking at you right now. They can take up their space and they feel that people will be there for them. They're not there stuttering over themselves, looking down and all this stuff. Hot people can take up space and they don't have weird voice intonations. 
Weird voice intonations come from a childhood where you either really had to stand out, you really, really wanted to stand out and no one noticed you, or you were really like trying to just hide and you were really just trying to, everything in a voice that's a little bit unnatural is you trying to hide something in your childhood when your voice developed. Try and listen to your voice objectively from an outside point of view and see if there's any inflections in there or any tones in there which are not pleasant to listen to. It's not judgmental, it's just self-development. So if you're irky and ah, uh, ah, uh, all the time like that in your voice, maybe you wouldn't get seen enough. Relax, take up your space, make eye contact. Don't try and jump into people's conversations. Take it slowly. It's way more seductive than squeaking into everyone's ear. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Love you lots like jelly tots. Bye. Oh, subscribe. Naughty. Subscribe right now.